Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. It is such a pleasure to come to you this morning. What a beautiful morning this is. God has given us a beautiful morning to praise Him, to worship Him, and to celebrate all of our mothers. I would like to read to you this morning uh, part of Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you this morning for this beautiful day you've given us to worship you. And I pray that you would bless all that we say and, and the response of our hearts toward you. I pray that you would bless each of our ladies, Lord. I pray that you would uh, remind them of your love for them. And not only them, but all who hear these words this morning. I thank you for your grace in our lives. Open our ears that we might hear what you have for us to hear this morning. Thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. One of the most influential people in my life has been my mother. Not only did she nurture me and shield and teach and discipline, both of my parents taught me to trust in God, to serve Him, to be faithful to Him. When I decided to answer the call of God into ministry, I chose to attend the same Bible college that my mom had graduated from. On the evening before I left for school, my mom set me down and placed these two books in front of me. They are Unger's Bible Dictionary, and you can tell it's, it's, it's been around a while, and Cruden's Complete Concordance. She explained that these are the two primary textbooks that she used when she had gone to Bible school, and that she wanted to pass that on to me as a sort of heritage, as a legacy from one generation to the next. I have cherished these two volumes and I have hundreds of volumes now in my library and to be honest some of them are far outweighed these two in their resource and in the information they carry but I cherish these two more than all the rest save my Bibles for these represent my heritage my legacy, a legacy of faithfulness, of commitment, of being willing to make that good confession to Christ. One of the aspects of the commitment of my parents, one of the aspects of uh, that they were willing to teach not only I but my brothers, was the commitment or the confession they made of Jesus Christ. They were not bashful to confess him. They were not bashful. Uh, they did not hide their uh, relationship with God so that nobody could see it. Such is the statement of Psalm 91, a beautiful confession of God. In verse 2 of Psalm 91, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Moses was making a confession of God and of God's faithfulness of God's uh, willingness to provide and to shelter and to be a refuge, uh, a refuge. What a confession of faith. Now we are not speaking this morning of confessing our sins. Often we speak of uh, verses and, and, and we rely on, for instance, 1 John 1, 9. If we'll confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is confession as well, but that is not this kind of uh, confession uh, specifically. We are speaking of making a confession of God, of who He is, of the glorious and magnificent nature of God. In verse 2 of Psalm 91, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God 
in whom I will trust. It's not a confession of sins, although uh, that is a very important thing to do. This is a confession of who, who God is or who Christ is. I make the, commission, uh, the confession this morning that God is great, that Jesus is the Son of God, and that he died for sinners. I confess that I have trusted in him for the forgiveness of my sin. I confess that he is my Lord and my God. I confess that he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. The confession of Moses in Psalm 91 is this, God is my refuge and my fortress. He is my God. In him I will trust. Consider what Moses endured during his lifetime. A convicted murderer sent into exile into the back of the desert, experiencing the burning bush, leading the children of Israel through the wilderness wanderings for 120 years of the length of Moses' life. He saw the ups and he saw the downs. What a what a, a an experience as he put out his staff over the Red Sea and God divided the Red Sea and the people walked across on dry ground. What a glorious moment. But what a down. What what a difficulty in other times when the people rebelled and they threatened to stone him. He had experienced the, the highs of life and the joys of life. But yet here Moses says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. In reality, a confession is a prayer, for it is a statement of reliance upon God. To fulfill this role of refuge and fortress, it is a confession of commitment. I choose to make God my refuge. I choose to make God my uh, my fortress. A fortress is no good if it stands empty. It is only appropriate or, is, or is only can provide us protection as we choose to dwell within its gates. And so uh, Moses is, is confessing and here is committing himself to sheltering in, in the goodness and in the grace of God. He is my fortress. He is my refuge. He is my God. In him will I trust. When I say to my soul, God is great, there's a few things that occurs. When I say it to my soul, it stirs up my faith. It, it, it bolsters me. It gives me uh, strength to endure life's uh, circumstances. It stirs the reality of God's grace in my life. At times, I need to remind myself that God is good, and that his grace endures to all generations. And I believe you need that at time as well. So I encourage you also to make that confession of what God is, who God is and what God has done. When Moses rehearsed to himself that God is our refuge and fortress, it no doubt gave him peace in his heart. And as we make that confession, It'll also give us peace, assurance, the uh, strength to continue despite life's circumstances, whether they be good or whether they be uh, difficult. A confession spoken gives resolve to continue, endurance. Notice the nature of the confession of Moses. In him I will trust. Understand our walk with God is a marathon. It's not a sprint. As I've mentioned, Moses for 120 years, 80, 80 of those closely following God. A lot of things happened to Moses in those 80 years. But yet, along the journey, he had chosen to make the confession in God will I trust in the course of the journey, we will face a wide variety of circumstances. At times, the pain can be so intense in our lives that we find that through gritted teeth, we utter the words, in him will I trust. At other times, life can be so sweet that we sing brightly, I will trust him. 
It is the confession of the goodness, the, greater, the, the greatness, the mercies of God, the commitment that results from that confession that will see us through every circumstance. That is why the, he, the writer of Hebrews states in chapter 10, starting in verse 19, let me read to you, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living uh, way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold on swervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Standing on that confession, that profession, that statement that God is faithful, let us hold unswervingly to that hope that we profess. Our confession of the power of Jesus Christ to save, of the presence of Jesus in our lives, of the ability and the position of Jesus as the high priest who presents his own blood as a perfect sacrifice on our behalf. Jesus Christ, who is the intercessor of each one of us unto the Father, serves to give the, give the soul stability, the peace, the resilience to endure every circumstance. I have experienced the joy of committing my life to the Lord for almost half a century. And I can say to you this morning, my Jesus has never failed. He's never forsaken. He's never left. He is faithful. And I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, can make the same statement. If you can't, put your trust in him. And you will find that he is faithful to you as well. I encourage you to, to confess him, not in some private or shielded way. As Jesus said, don't, let your, don't put your light under a barrel or, or under a bush so that no one can see it. Rather, make your confession public, openly, freely. For it is in making a confession to others of the work of Jesus Christ in our lives that we not only establish that commitment in our hearts, but that then we can encourage others as well to make that same good confession. On this Mother's Day, I would like to thank my own mother, for it is through her confession of Jesus Christ that I also came to know him. It is through her example that I learned to serve him. It is through her faithfulness to him that I have learned to be faithful to God. You can be the same light. Through your confession, you also can be a light leading others to Jesus Christ. So I will encourage you to make an open confession and not to be bashful about it, not to be closed off about it, but to openly confess Jesus Christ is your Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you this morning for your grace in our lives, and I thank you that you have loved us and cared for us. I thank you for all of our mothers, for all of those who have led the way and that stand before us as an example of what it means to serve you. I pray that you would uh, cause each of us to confess you and to make that good confession of you. I pray, Lord, uh, that you would bless, bless each of our ladies this morning, Lord. I pray that you give them a blessed day. Remind them of your love, Lord. And I just thank you for the gift that you have given us through them. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would bless each one now in your name. Amen. God bless each one of you. God loves you and we do as well.